What's up, everyone? Welcome, welcome. Good evening, good morning. I don't even know uh, which, which way it is. We changed the time, so I'm completely lost. So for us, for Europe, it's uh, noon. And news today, just before we kick in, just I wanted to show you that, guys. The NFT is the word of the year. So we're early in, and we're all going to make it. Today, we're going to be talking about football. Uh, and for this, we have no other than the legend himself, uh, Mark, aka You'll Never Walk Alone. Mark, welcome to uh, the Trip Talks. How's it going? Welcome. Yes. Yeah, it's really good. I'm uh, my team, fresh off a 2 0 win last night. So, uh, Mohamed Salah scoring again. Just keep scoring. Um, yeah, life's good. There's a lot going on in the world of football right now, and football and NFTs. And um, yeah, it's nice to be on the other end of uh, receiving end of uh, questions rather than being the one asking the questions. So yeah, looking forward to hear what you got in store for us. Yeah, awesome. So uh, are you still dominating? Sorry, let's let's kick in with that. It depends on who you speak to, doesn't it? Um, yeah. I think I think as Blackpool, we're doing very very well. We've got some. Pretty fierce. We've always got fierce internal competition between myself and AJ and Max. AJ yeah. had a, a really good period over the summer, which you know he's got American cards. Which you know, for yeah, those for that know the different seasons, the MLS runs from February-ish through to November, December. Um, Max has got also got some very nice MLS cards and picked up some good rewards. My gallery is not really geared towards. MLS, I did all right in Asia during the summer, but Asia is a little bit more of a lottery. The K League and the J League, you know, very difficult to predict the starting lineups. But uh, yeah, right now it's the European season. And I think this is where I like to think that, uh, yeah, my gallery is, is more suited towards November, right. December, January. So yeah, hopefully I can uh, do some damage in the next few months and we'll keep that yield pouring in. Yeah, Sam, I, I wanted to give you a right to answer because we had AJ twice on the show and it's the first time you're coming in. So he's been, you know, uh, just a smooth banter. So that's 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 why I wanted no, to give you the, the, the right to, to answer. Yeah, no, no trash talking from AJ. I mean, he's a Man United <laughs> fan, so he's got absolutely nothing to be happy about right now. So uh, <laughs> if he wants to take comfort in his little Sarah cards, then, then good luck to him. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so so the plan for today, um, there's a slight possibility, as I understand it, that your internet connection will rug us. So be mindful that there be uh, might be a little problem with, with internet. But so far, it's, it's been working fine, um, which is why it's good, we're going to be sharing from my screen and we're not going to be uh, seeing Mark's uh, awesome collection. You want to yet. see my beautiful tropical wallpaper background, no? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So um, today we'll uh, talk mostly about football, uh, obviously, and I will start with a, a little update on Soare because, it's, well, you know, it's, it's one of our, it is our main vertical, actually, our main troop. Uh, and we'll uh, give you a little update on the two most, uh, two of our most uh, recent investment uh, in, um, in football with uh, Futium and Meta Soccer, two projects that we are uh, very hopeful about. And it's, we are very bullish on those two projects, so we'll come back on those. A little bit later and maybe we'll drop in an alpha or two we'll see wait till the end we'll do that uh, anyway so let's let's kick in with uh with the sora uh i believe um with all these new football uh troops opening we'll be looking to populate uh our uh, our community with footies right with people with good skills and willing to put in some time and willing to uh to play those games so mark has thought about a nice idea to um you know, to, 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 to get a feel of uh, what uh, are your skills in football and uh, how in, uh, in fantasy league and so on. So maybe, Mark, you want to say a few words about, um, about the idea that we talked about? Yeah, sure. So we're going alpha early doors, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're starting with, a, with an alpha and then... Start with, with uh, some alpha. Yeah. And then, okay, well, we're going to have to get better than that. Yeah, look, I think, as you said, Sorare is our biggest vertical. Uh, Sorare, actually, the game itself... Uh, evolves around real life, real players, and we'll get onto the meta stock, we'll get onto footy, which are very different. But I think the fundamentals of playing football games are very similar. I mean, number one, I think it goes without saying you have to be passionate, enthusiastic towards the sport itself. There will be people, and there's poker professionals playing, Sarah now, there's DFS professionals playing, that I can tell you now, they're not, you know, football might not be their, their number one sport, but they look at something like Sarah, they look at the potential yield potential and they go, yeah, okay. They force themselves to learn about the game or learn about the players, learn about the scoring. 
because the, the rewards are so lucrative. But I think as we build out the football vertical within Blackpool, we've got more games than which we'll discuss today. And we are going to need more like-minded individuals like AJ, like myself, that play the game 24-7, love the sport, and as I say, there are going to be ways that you can generate a living from playing these type of games. So the idea today is that what we'll do over the next few weeks, we'll have a series of Sarare lessons from the very, very beginning. So don't worry if you've never ever played Sarare and you've only just seen these cards on our timelines. We'll help you get into the game from a very uh, beginner stage, completely free to play. We'll put up a few prizes that we'll uh, uh, give out to those that are you know, following us on Blackpool and, uh, and start out and follow our tips from the very beginning. And yeah, if you are someone that really enjoys the sport and you're someone that can really get behind these type of games and projects, then yeah, we'd love to uh, keep the conversation flying with a view to yeah, maybe inviting you to be more involved in the verticals of other games as we take them on. I see you're on the homepage yourself, Sam. Uh, yeah. I think the very first stage that we'd encourage anybody to do would be to sign up and get an account. And from there, you'll be able to go on and explore the very basics of the game. And I think, as you said, we'll be able to go in uh, next week and we'll be able to talk to people about the very first steps that they can make within the game itself. And we'll set some sort of you know, initial prize competition. And yeah, let's see if we can find within our troops, handful, 10, 20, 50, however many are out there, people that really enjoy fantasy football games and uh, will help bring you into the fold a bit more. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a quick account at the same time so people can see it's pretty it's dead easy. And basically, yes, that's that's what we'll be doing over, over the next few weeks. So stay in touch with us, especially if you're willing to play uh, fantasy football. So, And also as well, look, I mean, we appreciate oh. because Sorare is so big. If you if you are wanting to, if you already play Sorare and so you know the basics as well, yeah, we'd love to chat with you also. Because again, your skills to build out your Sorare account are going to be similar skills that we think are going to be you know, needed for playing the other football management games as well. Right, it's not it's not taking my uh, my stake there uh, stake that work out. I should have checked that. No, you've, you've, you've been blocked, Sam. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't work, but all my all my um other ones are are reasonably toxic right now, so I don't think I'll do that step now. But it's fine. Well, look, I think um, for today, so if anybody doesn't know the yeah. homepage, go to the homepage. Um, you can see, I think they've signed up 10 more Russian clubs today. So that number would jump to 225. I'm sure you're going to find your favorite players there if you're a football fan. And uh, yeah, over the next few weeks, let's talk more Sarre. Let's get you guys more involved. Ask any questions you want, big or small. I started with uh, playing this game on day one. So February 2019, I've been involved. I've got some tutorials, which may be a little bit out of date, but happy to share those. We do a podcast most weeks to talk to guests, happy to talk to people. And, you know, we can interview someone from the very, very beginning if you want to get involved and share your experiences on football management games. But the ultimate goal here for Blackpool is to get to know people who would like to play these type of games on a more regular basis. Exactly. So uh, head over to the Discord. We have uh, two football channel at the moment, one for Soria and one for Futium. And we'll be doing another one for Meta Soccer. We'll talk about this uh, in a few minutes. So there'll be plenty of places for you guys to come and uh, and talk about football with Mark and with myself and other people. And it like doesn't AJ. matter if you support Manchester United as well. We're still we're an equal opportunist now. We will still allow you to uh, support inferior teams, and we won't treat you any differently. Yeah, I see. I, I thought we were saying no banter, but it's fine. <laughs> it's AJ. Uh, so yeah, quick, uh, quick recap of where we stand in Sorare right now. So I think these numbers are, are up to date, right? Um, we now stand at cl closing in on uh, 3,000 ETH worth of uh, cards between uh, you, AJ, and Max. Yeah, it's been a busy week. There's a, a, a new, I would say, whale has come into the game about 10 days ago. And I'm just looking at his uh, screen here. Uh, I can actually send it to you, so maybe. No, it's 
He spent 227 ETH, 228 ETH in about That's 10 days. Interesting. Do, so, do, we know, do we know this guy? We sort of have a connection to him. Um, yes, there's a manager I speak to quite regularly that's also been involved in some Blackman tokens. And um, yes, uh, we're hoping to get a little bit more, but we've been a recipient of some of the ETH that this uh, new person has spent. So um, in addition to those numbers that you just uh, shared, Sam, I think we've probably got about 70 or 80 ETH in ETH now as a vertical ready to deploy into new auctions for when new cards come up that we like as well. So yeah, we've managed to maintain a, a positive trajectory. You know, we've gone through the to 2,700 ETH bracket now and say, so well, next target is going to be 3,000 ETH. But if we were to spend the ETH that we've got on our respective balances at the moment, we would, we would shoot through 2,800. And uh, yeah, I think hopefully by December, Target will be by the end of the year to, to break 3,000. Awesome. Okay, good. All right. So do I think that's that's about wraps it up for Soraya. Uh, if you guys have any questions about Soraya, just shoot them up in the in the chat. We'll answer anytime. Uh, I still see your your um your first in the awards, uh, Mark. So you you still um you're still on top of your game. I see. It's good. Yeah. The skeptics will say that's because I started on day one, but uh, those that, those that know, they know, they know. Anyway, awesome. So uh, one of the uh, other football uh, trip that we opened uh, recently and that you guys are aware of is uh, Fujim. So we had AJ, uh, I think it was last week, uh, who talked a bit about Fujim. But maybe for those who are not here and also I would like to have your opinion, Marcus, you've been uh, uh, spearheading this, um, this new, um, this new uh, trip. So I'd like to have your, your opinion on Fujim. Uh, where do you think we are going? And what did Blackpool get uh, from this early investment? Yeah, no, look, Fujim is, for me, is a, is a real breath of fresh air. I mean, Sarea is established now. I mean, it's theirs to lose. They, they've, they've dominated the NFT space with utility. I think we've been very fortunate that uh, we've, we've got easily the strongest foothold in that game. I know we've got a strong foothold in Axie as well, but our foothold in Sarare is far bigger than anyone else. Uh, and, and I think we, we have got the ability to maintain that distance between us and others uh, over the next six to 12 months as the game continues to grow. But it's, we're probably a little bit less, we're less active in Sarare than we were maybe six, 12 months ago, where we had to keep an eye on every single auction and make sure we're around every single step of the way. We still have two, three busy days of the, of the week where we've got to set our teams. We've got to make sure on top of all the team news and so forth. But I would say now that my day is less Sarare focused than it was six to 12 months ago. And what's that, what, what that's allowed is for us to take a look at other games which are emerging in this space. Uh, and Footium was one of the first to stand out really to me because it really reminded me of games like Football Manager, Championship Manager, Chairman Manager, it's got a little bit of everything. And yeah, the guys that are behind it, the two co-founders, James and Jordan, they're here in the UK as well. So I've had the fortune of, of being able to meet these guys. And we bumped into them, I think we all bumped into them in Lisbon a few weeks back, um, a month ago in Lisbon. Wow, not that long. And yeah, I just just really like what they're building. It's, it's, it's a very, I, would, I wouldn't say it's very, very niche because it's not. Football Manager is played by millions and millions of people worldwide and that pour hours and hours into this in a similar way that people pour hours into FIFA and Pro Evo and things like that. When, I, when I'm saying niche is that they've only sold 3,060 clubs in the pre-sale, which amazingly, 23 minutes to sell these out at 0.05 ETH, which I think is a fantastic effort by the team. Just that right balance of, of hype, no one, no one getting too carried away. They listen to the community. Uh, they allowed the community to buy two teams each if they're on a particular whitelist. And then when they took it out to the public, um, they sold about a third of the teams to, you know, predominantly a lot of people that have come over from Surreal that wanted to diversify and pick up something else in a different, but similar game. And then it went out into the public Friday of last week. And yeah, I think everyone, was, it, was, it was quite interesting to see because there was a few people there that were going, oh, is it going to sell? Is it going to appeal? It's like, it's football. It's football management. Of course, it's going to appeal. 
Uh, it was at a very sensible price point. They, I think they could have priced it more aggressively. I think they could have gone for 0.1 a club and people still wouldn't have batted an eyelid. Um, but I had to take into consideration that gas last week was quite expensive as well. And there yeah. were a lot of people that were new to transacting. You know, many people have only ever bought NFTs in Surair before. So this game isn't suddenly attracting people that like to flip these have PFPs or, you know, get involved in many of the JPEGs that don't have utility. This particular game, footy, and appealed to people that already play the rare or already like football management games. And I think a high percentage of the people in the first couple of uh, pre-sale phases, they didn't even have MetaMask. They didn't even have yeah. you know, the ability to <laughs> transact before. So there was a lot of education that had to go on from the footy and team. They've got a great guy, um, funny name, Sam, in their uh, Discord uh, channel <laughs> that uh, moderates it really well. Everybody. I think ended up getting the team or teams they wanted, you know, pretty smoothly, which was which was good to see. And yeah, they, now it's sorry, yeah. No, so they, no, sorry, I like okay. I like the fact that they, they did this limitation of like two per per person. So we don't have like one whale coming in picking five hundred of them or gas wars or anything that could well, have... you mean like you mean like Blackpool that came in and bought fifty well, well, fifty, but it was it, it was a free sale arrangement. Yes. Yeah, no, well, funny enough. And we're not going to flip those. I mean, we were waitlisted for those. It's not someone oh, yeah, who's going to flip them, obviously. No. Like, and, the, and the other thing is that when the dust settled and the 3,060 uh, had uh, uh, been distributed, there were a couple of other whales uh, that came in. There's uh, one guy, Sneaky something or other, ended up with uh, 200 clubs. Oh, uh, really? And Seguin is, uh, is a friend of ours that also does some good con great content for Sarai. Uh, he picked up 98 clubs, I think. So okay, so yeah. we need to buy more then. Yeah, we well, we could we could look at buying more maybe. But uh, the point is that this game, I think, initially people were there were a few people that were saying, oh, you know, there's you know, one Dow's coming in and they're buying too many, or is it going to be that they're just going to be a, they're going to have a load of feeder clubs? And I think the the, the structure of the leagues, there's going to be eight divisions, and I think the structure of the leagues will appeal to individual managers on particular budgets that want to, you know, manage every aspect of managing their club through to DAOs, uh, which will be competing, yeah, maybe partly with their checkbook, but that will still be tapered by, you know, how, much, how many prizes can be won. You know, we're not going to go and spend as a DAO 50 ETH on anything if we don't feel as though this, we've got the ability to recoup that and more through playing the game itself. It's not just a cash pit where we're, you know, beating our chest and, uh, hey, look at us, we've got, you know, all the best assets in the game. It still has to make financial sense at the end of the day. So it's nice to see that uh, others have followed our lead. And, uh, yeah, there should be healthy competition, whether you want to compete one-to-one -one on, a, on a limited budget or whether or not there are going to be, let's say, collaborations yeah, with uh, people with more teams that can all work a little bit more closely together. Yeah, because the way I understand, there'll be uh, some form of uh, scholarship system, right, in Fujim. So some of our community members will be able to play with our assets. So it's sure. that that's that's also the strength of uh, of Blackpool is that you guys, like one of those fifty of those uh, clubs, will probably be. I mean, let's say forty-seven, because I, I believe you'll get you keep one, and AJ and Max want to keep one, but the the remaining will be up for grad. For good managers and we can come back to what we were saying earlier with that little sorry competition that we are trying to, to put together is that we'll just be gouging how uh how skillful you guys are in managing a, a football team and then uh, the community members that stand out the active ones uh people are looking into uh scholarships and putting in the time and efforts will be able to play for gym uh, with our assets this uh this i think is very interesting yeah, 100%. I mean, the, the nice thing is that, you know, we don't know where this game's going to grow. I mean, it was, you know, a fairly modest amount of money that we'd invested into it. I mean, it's only two and a half ETH. Yeah. And I say, and I say that, two and a half ETH is still a significant amount of, of money, but two and a half ETH relative to our other NFT assets within the DAO, it is a very simple initial step. We wanted to show the support to the footy and team. They've got a, they've got a, yeah, I mean, every new game has got uh, a challenging path uh, ahead of them. Uh, the nice thing about Footium is they've got a game engine, which is already ready to go out the box. But the next step, well, we've got the reveal of the clubs next week, which will be really interesting. And maybe again, we can do a, a live stream on this to yeah, show sure. 
uh, all of the uh, all of our followers exactly where our teams are. So the exciting part about next week is that we don't know where the teams are going to fit uh, start their life. So we could end up getting very very lucky and having a Division One team. Uh, or we could end up with a bunch of Division 8 teams. I think we will end up with a bunch of Division 8 teams, but we might have a couple of, of higher ones. So the way it works is Division 1 will be 12 teams. So 12 of the 3,060 teams are Division 1 teams. Each division down then has two lots of 12 feeding into it. Right. So, yeah. okay, out of the 3,060, we've got 1,530 Division 8 teams. So we've got a very strong chance of getting a lot of Division 8 teams uh, next week. But in amongst there, there'll be, you know, some, some, some others. So, yeah, for us, we've got the ability to share these clubs out with potential uh, scholars. Uh, there'll be some beta testing that we can uh, provide uh, footy and with uh, some, some feedback. But really, we're sowing the seeds for something which is likely to start, I would say, Q2 of next year. So, again, that gives us a nice little runway where we can speak to people, help them, really make sure that they buy into what we're trying to achieve with Blackpool and, and help understand what their goals are as well. And, and yeah, it would be nice to think in Q, by Q2 of next year, we've got maybe our first handful of footy and managers that uh, are playing the game on a regular basis. And yeah. you know, we're stra strategizing on a weekly basis. And again, the 10, 20 hours extra that I was putting into Surrey every week, I can now maybe put that into something else like footy and, and we can build up, you know, really strong vertical there. Yeah, some I've already seen some community members actually from Blackpool uh, community. They've already bought one or two of the of the clubs and are willing to to you know uh, do the the whole thing as part of Blackpool Guild. So even if we don't have, like we we will have we have fifty clubs right now, but there will probably be more than these playing uh, with us under Blackpool's flag in a way, like with with the tools we are building, uh, with the the tips and advice that you will uh, give in the chat and things like that. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, the, beauty, the beauty is with Division 8, I mean, they've already said that, you know, the demand could mean that they could quite happily build a Division 9 and potentially after sure. that a Division 10. Or they could build out on different chains and have similar 3,060 league club structure on Polygon, on, 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 on other different chains as well. So there's lots of different ways. But the, ultimately, if the game is successful and it goes through beta testing successfully, then that will open up more opportunities. And yes, 50 clubs out of 3,060 is not a lot but it's mm -hmm. enough to get us started. But if they suddenly go, right, we're going to launch another 3,000 clubs, another mm -hmm. Division 1 to a structure elsewhere, then yeah, we can say, yep, yeah, maybe we'll it's take a 100, maybe we'll take a mm -hmm. couple of hundred on, on those and we'll, we can really build out, um, yeah, a serious a guild, scholarship, whatever you want to call it, uh, within the game itself. Yeah, I, I do remember that. I mean, we, we settled for 50 clubs. We could have easily, as you said earlier, put maybe three, like four times more than that with, with no problem. But... Uh, doing so would have kind of tipped the balance a little bit too much. Like if you, if you come into a game where there are 3,600 clubs and 10% uh, of that is already owned by Blackpool, it's a little bit, it's a little bit much. That's why we stick for 50. But then as the game expands, we'll, we'll be looking for expanding. Of course. Uh, we had a, a question from uh, Fardoff, who I believe actually bought a couple of, uh, of teams, if I remember well. Uh, is the game engine off the shelf or custom built? Do you know that? The only thing I know about the game engine is that if you lined up your team against my team and we both put our tactics, and so you go 4-3-3, I go 4-4-2, and we press play, then there's already a predetermined outcome. So we don't have the ability to make decisions during the game that could influence it. So from the point that we start the game, the outcome is already known and we just watch it play out on the screen through the various text updates. So one of the things that we'll be doing during the beta testing phase is asking the community in terms of what do they want to see next? It might be that they want to see more cosmetic changes or they might want to see things to do with the stadium or things, you know, or they might turn around and say, no, we want a more complex tactical engine, in which case then Jordan, James and the guys are going to have to program ways that, okay, you start with 442, but oh, I bought this new substitute on and we changed our formation because we were tuned down at half time. Mm -hmm. and guess what? That decision ended up influencing it. We won 3-2 in the second half. So the, the, the bare bones to the, game stage, uh, to the gameplay is there. As so we can test games out um, during the beta stage. Um, but we don't have the ability, once the game has started, 
to make decisions mid-game in order to influence and try and change the outcome. Not yet. But that'll, that'll come. <laughs> that, that'll be a future, mm -hmm. future iteration. Yes, because of course the game is only at the uh, alpha stages at this point. So, okay, uh, I think I think that's all for for Futium. Uh, we can say that like the the design, uh, of course, will be uh, randomized. If I'm uh, yes, correct. it's all it's it's all generative, um, mm -hmm. based on the UK sounding towns and villages and, and and cities. So if you go to their Discord, they've been putting out some sneak previews every day. Uh, so you can get to have feel for you know the the type of names that you might get. Um, the higher up you get drawn, so they, they, one of the the big things that everyone wants to see next week. It's not just about oh are, are you in Division One, Division Two, etc. Where uh, your youth academy produces on average a higher caliber of youth prospect each season. The higher up the division you are, starting division you are, you get a larger stadium potentially. And I think there's a subtle difference in the badges as well. The badges you get a, I don't know, a stronger, a rarer badge, maybe the traits of the badge are rarer. And again, that leads to certain um, benefits for, for the club owners as well. So, but I think one of the nice things that we can share, uh, which some people know, but uh, we, we, we can share is that uh, we've, as part of our deal uh, and assistance in terms of consulting with the Quitium guys from an early stage, They've given us a couple of customized uh, clubs. So we're actually going to get our very own Blackpool HQ FC with, of course, our main black badge with our uh, Ape logo. So uh, hopefully during the reveal next week, we, we know that as an influencer uh, that the teams that we've got from that pool will either be a Division 3 or a Division 4 team. So we won't. Blackpool HQ won't start its life in Division 1 or Division 2. It will definitely start its life in Division 3 or Division 4. So, yeah, we're hopeful that we'll get a reasonable size stadium. Um, I don't know whether or not our badge will have any rare traits at all, but it, it's a customised badge, which is pretty cool. So you'll be able to compete against us, certainly in the first season, either in Division 4 or Division 3, and we'll start our journey there. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, one last, one last thing, and then we move on to, to Meta Soccer. We said it last week, but one of the things that I really like about which is that uh, they will have different leagues uh, competing in parallel, and those would be on different chains, which I find it really cool. So you'll have the Ethereum uh, Cup, the Solana Cup, and, uh, and so on, and so on. And so on. Uh, I think it's really, really cool. With the potential that the winners of each chain will meet in some sort of like Champions League, Super League, yeah. Uh, so again, whilst you might be able to be the, the champion within your own division, you can then be the champion within your own network. <laughs> yeah, you could then be the champion, champion of champions. Um, yeah, cross chain champion. Yeah. Cross chain champion. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Which I think again will bring together different people uh, from yeah completely different backgrounds. Yeah, I really love the design of the uh, that they put together as well. It's really cool. Uh, do we know much about the Fujim token actually before we move on to Meta Soccer? Not yet. I think it's worth saying that there is an AMA that uh, Fujim are doing on Friday this week. So tomorrow, if uh, you wanted to either put a question or listen to questions, again, the main Fujim Discord channel, they've got an AMA channel now where people are posting up their questions and they're getting upvoted. Uh, I know that there are questions already around the Fujim token. So I think it's probably best for me to deflect that and say, Anybody that's interested in learning about the footy and token or questions at this early stage around the game in general, either go and listen into the AMA tomorrow or contribute by asking your own questions. And I'm sure the team will get around to answering everything. Yeah, if you if you want, you can even put those on our Discord in the Fujim channel. It's, it would be relayed by Mark, I'm sure. Yeah, maybe we can suck in the announcements like we do on the Sarai one so that they, they auto show when, when something of note comes in as well. We can get that done, yeah? Yeah, it's, it's already done, I think. Okay, perfect. Uh, sometimes, for some reason, Discord just, I don't know, it feels like there is a lot of delay between the announcement. I need to look into that. But uh, it's been set up. Now, does it work every time? I, I need to check. But... All right, well, look, I'll, I'll certainly go in and pay a lot more attention to the, the channels now and say, now we're moving on to MetaSoccer. I'm sure we'll add a MetaSoccer channel to our Discord yeah. as well. And yes. I'll start to hang, hang out there a bit more just to make sure I don't miss any questions and we can help direct people 
Yes, yes. For instance, I have uh, like um, you were mentioning the division that we could have team that lands in division eight or division one. Uh, I already have some people in the community asking uh, if they get something else than division eight because they don't want to start too high because they won't maybe put up the time as much as as, as they can uh, as they would need for uh, for a higher division. They're willing to trade their division seven plus for one of our division eight just to start from the bottom. That's interesting. I think, look, mm. let's see how it goes. I think we, yeah. this, there's a, because the, the audience of people that want to play this game, they're all rabid you know, football manager fans. Everyone's, you know, we all want, we all want Footium to be here. The reality is it's not there yet. It's here. So we have to take baby steps. And, you know, I think everyone's imagination is running wild with them. It, it's got so much potential, but we, we just have to wait and see what happens. And it will be step by step by step. Uh, I think if you are fortunate enough to get a higher division team, you know, look, let's talk about it. I'm sure, you know, we'll have to wait and see what sort of value the market puts on these. You know, there's there's already been talks of, you know, division one team could be worth one ETH plus. Well, if you've only just paid 0.05 ETH for your team and, and you wake up next week and you find out you've drawn a division one team, you know, yeah, maybe you do want to flip that on and concentrate on something lower. But there may be reason to just... Hold on for a couple of months if you can. <laughs> yes, because I would do that. We, we all know that in any of these NFT comp, uh, games, the rarest assets, you know, don't be that person that sells too early, you know, because they, they could end up being an absolute uh, gold mine. And we, we would be that person who will buy it early, though. <laughs> who knows? I mean, as I say, I mean, I think that the other, the nice thing about the, the Putium is that it, it, you, you get very attached to the NFT. I think mm -hmm. as, you, as we've seen again with the, the, the PFP and the avatar projects as well, people people get attached to them, but I think people get attached and they convince everyone that the community is the best thing since sliced bread because ultimately they just want to bring up the full price of the asset that they own. I think you will get elements of that in, in football, but I think the more you play with your own club and the more you've got you know a deeper connection with the players that you're you're using and uh, and winning and losing games with. I mean, we've already got a lot of people saying they're going to write these like road to glory blogs, which is very popular. And they're going to document every step of their journey, whether that be incoming transfers, outgoing transfers, matches, reports, things like this. I can see people getting very, very engrossed. And I nice. think the, enjoy the enjoyment aspect of this game is, is, is going to be huge. And just because you've got a ton of money doesn't mean to say someone's going to part with their prized asset. Because, you know, I think pe people... The, the, the bonus on top of this, and we still don't know the, the, the mechanics to it, is that these will be still income generating NFTs. You will own the club. You'll be able to mint players from your club that you can either keep or sell. So you can you could just become a farm for youth players and send them onto the clubs that are above you that are competing maybe for uh, more prize money or that have got more time to devote to it. But I don't think at this stage, it's too early to say, I don't think there's definitely a correlation between, or oh, if I've got a higher division club, I've got to spend more time in it. I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. You, you've got a good starting position. Seasons take two weeks. So even if you're in division six, division seven, and division eight, you know, and you've got a good team behind you, rather than spending one ETH to buy a team that's, you know, four or five divisions above you, you could spend one ETH on your own team and you could probably catapult through Division 8, 7, 6, 5, 4 very, very quickly because, say, it's only two weeks a season. In three months, you could, go, you could get six promotions. So it, it just after next week, when we see where the division, where, where the clubs are and where you, where, you, where you ended up, I think we will inevitably see some people aping him and go, oh, yeah, I want to buy Division 1 or Division 2 if one of those teams becomes available. But I still think people will relish the challenge of taking wherever they yeah. start out and build up because it's not if you said that the season was going to be three months long or six months long and people oh, that's, a, that's a grind that's a slog to get from division eight all the way up to division division three foot two one yeah i can understand that yeah maybe let's buy a division four team and let's you know slow, uh, accelerate that process but two weeks a season i say if someone was to dedicate three to six months of time and resources to building up the club i see no reason why you can't get People that are going to get multiple promotions and 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 really yeah rocket through rocket through the rocket through the divisions. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, I would definitely do that. Like if I if I get anything in uh, division eight or nine or eight or seven, I would I would just try to to take it all the way to the top myself. And potentially with the permissions, I mean, again, depending on how they build this out, 
you know, if you're sitting on a Division One club, it might be that you can keep the asset, but you can give the permission for someone else to manage that club for you. In which yes. case, you don't have to rush to sell and try and cash in at a time where you perhaps don't know the true value of your asset yet. You can be patient three, six months, and you can you can maybe recruit your very own football manager. It might be that myself or AJ or you, Sam, turn around and go, yeah, I'll manage your club for you. And yeah. again, you, 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 you end up renting your club to someone else and then deciding on an, a, a split of you know profits that you, you you might want to make with that person as well but yeah i don't think it's 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 nice to see activity and liquidity when when new projects come about and floor prices start to move up and down but you know did did everyone really go to the trouble of fighting for these clubs in the in the pre-sale just to try and flip them on next week yeah i don't think so as well as your xql actually is a is a uh, an active member i've seen him publishing a lot as well in, in the governance so thank you uh, by the way uh who's yeah saying that he's been chatting with uh, the community in future and he, he doesn't have a feeling that any of them is going to be looking to flip anytime soon so that's that's good to know uh, also i'm seeing that uh, mr superman is in the chat so big up to you guys he's doing an uh, amazing work in philippines so uh, superman yeah it don't change hey, superman, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah wait no sorry you were good i we're no, I was just saying hi <laughs> to those that have joined us today on the, on the stream. Nice, nice to meet some new faces. Yep. Okay, I think that's that's wraps it up for Fujium. So the latest addition to our uh, list of games, and this one we haven't talked about it yet. We we published a, a blog post uh, about this, but we haven't presented to you live. And for this, I think Mark is the man. So what is Meta Soccer? Tell it to me like I'm five. Well, I think the nice thing with MetaSoccer is, as you said, it's a brand new vertical. Um, we made the announcement on was it Tuesday and, and they've just kindly tweeted out the partnership uh, with them. It, it's, it's actually got very a lot of similarities to Footium. So my base level understanding is this is another football management type of game where you eventually, they haven't sold clubs yet, but you will eventually be able to buy an NFT club and you will be able to send youth scouts to go and find you players that you would then sign to your club. And then again, you would play out uh, matches against other managers in divisions, competitions that they put together, um, train your players as you, would, you know, as you would do in most management games. And yeah, train and compete. So. If you scroll back up a little bit to the top, there's four pillars to their, their game. A little bit further, please. Yeah, I was I was trying to look for the uh, there we go the the, sc the scouts, but uh... okay, no, sorry. If you go down underneath the big purple banner, there you yeah. go. Yeah. So there's four pillars to the game itself, and this is the very first stage. So this week was the private pre-sale. Today is the first public drop, 25th of November, and. The first drops is around youth scouts. So youth scouts, and we put a blog post on this a couple of days ago, uh, youth scouts find players and they find players for particular positions. So you've got youth scouts for goalkeepers, youth scouts for defenders, midfielders, forwards. You send your youth scout and then they've got, you know, different percentage chances of coming back to you with players with certain ceiling of potential. So your youth scout could go and get lucky and find, you know, the next amazing forward or if you come back with just the standard run of the mill forward. So initially what we've been invited to do is buy these vouchers for the uh, youth scouts. So this is actually on uh, Polygon and these vouchers are, are 120 US dollars uh, a voucher. And at this stage, like Footium, what we've done is we've just taken a foothold and we've bought some, some vouchers. So we've actually ended up with 170 vouchers. We've ended up uh, going for 80 midfield uh, coach uh, youth scouts, 80 defender youth scouts, and 10 forward youth scouts. Um, there was no real method in our selection process other than the fact that they were selling very, very quickly. And that is what we felt <laughs> was available at the time. And, and we just grabbed it before it was, was all sold. But even yeah. if we are top heavy on one position over another, we've got them to trade with other uh, guilds and DAOs that have, have bought some more goalkeepers or more forwards, for example. But this is this is really the very first stage. This is a pre-sale. Um, again, 
drawing a couple of similarities to Footium. I would say that Footium seems to have a little bit of a head start on the game engine. I say right now you could go and test Footium and play a game against another manager. In Meta Soccer, that doesn't happen yet. They haven't built out that initial game engine. So I can imagine it being similar, but it's that they're behind the curve in terms of being able to bring the game to market. So you'll see, I think you showed briefly earlier that the roadmap is not going to be until Q2, Q3 of next year. But I think where maybe Meta Soccer has a little bit more of an advantage at the moment is it's got a little bit more of a global appeal. Um, the team behind it, um, it works out of Barcelona and they've got a more traditional fantasy football game based on real life, the Liga players, where they've already got a million iOS users and a million users on their Google Play app. So they've got people that know them. And that's not to say that's going to translate directly over onto a blockchain football management game, but they've already got say, an audience of people that know them and play their game. And I think if you look at the structure of their Discord channel, it's very comprehensive. You know, they've got a lot more people already talking and chattering about the game itself. So to me, I think there's, yeah, it, it's, it's a nice balance. I think Footium will really attract and has already attracted these hardcore niche football managers, very tribal. They'll build everything around their team. And yeah, there will be, you know, money involved, of course. But I think there's a lot of potential enjoyment with, with Footium. And with Meta Soccer, I see some similarities, but I see this being maybe more mainstream, a bit more generic. You can see with the arts, uh, it's got a feel like it has a bit more of a mobile app feel to it for me anyway. Um, and I think it will appeal to a broader audience. It might be a little bit more pick up and play, but this is just very, very speculative on my behalf. Whereas I say footy and might be a little bit more, you, you can really get quite granular and go deeply into all of the different aspects of the game. But again, I think both... I've got every chance of succeeding and you know, it's exciting to have got into projects at this very, very early stage. Um, I say our investment into Meta Soccer was a little bit more than Footium, so it's equivalent of around 5 ETH. So it's not huge, but it's given us a starting um, position. I think there will be more potential spending to come with Meta Soccer because they are going to drop in clubs, they're going to drop in stadiums as well. So it does look as though you will need to buy the different NFT assets to, to make your club up at the beginning. Um, but yeah, both are on the very early stages of their uh, journeys and uh, yeah, we'll be following both every step of the way. <clears throat> so yeah, the, the game, the MetaSoccer game is a little, a little bit further uh, down the line, but it's going to be uh, similar in that it's going to be a fantasy league football based on uh, non-existent players, right? With a, with a game engine to solve the, the different uh, game scores and so on. But as you, what, what you've been saying is um, we'll need to buy scouts to find new players. Uh, next drop is going to be the club, so we'll need to buy clubs as well. So that's a lot of NFTs, and it's a lot of investment to do to actually play the game. So how does Meta Soccer feel about the uh, scholarship system, where some people like ourselves will be buying lots of scouts, uh, probably lots of uh, clubs, and then having uh, people playing uh, playing those uh Within, within the game design as in like a rental system. You sure, know that's I think, gonna happen? yeah, I think one, one big difference here is that uh, with Meta Soccer, Blackpool can buy one club. So this won't be like Footium where we buy 50, 100, you know, 200 clubs. Uh, apparently the structure is, is quite different here. We can buy one club and within that club, we can have as many teams as we want. So right. for example, we could have like a Blackpool HQ club. We could have all of our scouts within that club. But then we can invite as many people to run a team. As long as we've got enough players, we mm -hmm. can say, right, those, those players can be managed by that person, those players can be managed by that person. We can keep segregating, have as many clubs as we want uh, within, sorry, any teams as we want within, within our club. So this is, again, still something which I'm getting to learn, but we don't have to go out and buy hundreds of clubs. We can, I think I'm right in saying we can buy one club, uh, we can buy one stadium, and then basically we've got teams within that. So again, I have to learn a little bit more about uh, the yeah, permissions in terms stages. of mm. yeah how we, how we'll be able to sign on how we'll be able to assign it to scholars, but yeah straight from the 
straight from the get-go, these guys have said this is going to be something which is going to be scholar friend, very scholar friendly. So yeah, watch your space, and as we get those details, we'll we'll share them on. Yeah, of course, and also because we've invested early and we are very involved in discussion with these two projects. Uh, of course, scholarships is something that we want to push. Uh, so this, if you, if you guys have feedback, if you have questions, if you have ideas for those games, you can relay them through us. It's absolutely no problem. Um, it, so I think that's pretty much wraps it up for uh, today, unless uh, you wanted, we don't know much more about MetaSucker at the moment, uh, other than what we said. No, I think I'd also like to ask uh, the community if they're coming across games in this sector. It doesn't have to be specific to football. I mean, we we will, I think, build out more sports-related games and they can be based on real life, like Sarah. They can be based on fantasy, like Footium and like uh, Meta Soccer. I mean, I've seen some out there. There was Cy a few, Cyborg, I think, which is a mixture of sci-fi and football and or some sort of, you know, combination. Um We've spoke to people over the last few weeks at a company called Goals who are producing more of a FIFA type uh, experience on, on the blockchain as well. So anything that anybody comes across that, uh, that they think might be interesting either for themselves, for Blackpool as a DAO, scholars, then yeah, we're very happy to, to send our team in and, and you know try to learn as much as we can at these early stages so that we can share those benefits out with, with, with people uh, later down the line or at least provides a, you know, a valid second opinion on something you might be looking at yourself. Um, I say that I've looked personally at things like Genuino, which I've been tweeting about, which is based around more of a collector based thing. If you're a fan of on this occasion, Fear and Tina, um, there are, you know, companies making a comeback from one or two years ago that sold NFTs and then went defunct and coming back again. There really is a lot out there. So look, we don't know everything. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we've got our ear pretty close to the ground and we, we, we make good decisions on, you know, and we get approached, fortunately, because of our involvement in other projects. So people do come to us, which is nice. But there are other things out there uh, and we'd love to learn of them as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, we're in alpha territory here and in case you haven't understand it. Because, uh, yeah, the, you, you mentioned two projects that I think uh, are interesting, goals and insightful that we are looking into right now. So this is the uh, sort of alpha territory here. Uh, we have, um, I've seen, you know, yeah, Oxysis, um, Oxysis, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, is looking at uh, monkey ball. So maybe monkey ball could be something to look at as well. Monkey ball, well. I mean, it's got monkey and it. it's got ball in it. Yeah. I mean, it's, there we it's, go. We'll, we'll, we'll have a look, see what that is. Yeah, look, please. Yeah, if you've got any information on that, then definitely share and we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, we'll put it through its paces. It's an NFT based fantasy soccer game. Yeah, okay, you said soccer, so I guess that, that, out of the way. We'll let, it, we'll, let, we'll let it slide this once. I think I might have said it once during the course of the hour as well. So I'll have to find myself. Okay, hey, good. Right. Uh, that's, I think, wraps it up. Uh, unless you guys have any more questions. Uh, we've been here for nearly an hour now. So I think, I think it's a good time to wrap it up. And we've also thrown in a few alphas about some upcoming games so i guess yeah. we're good to go just 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 finish up with a reminder on sarah then you know mm -hmm. if uh if, if there's people out there let's figure out a time that works yep. for everybody and uh we're, we'll i look forward to coming back and chatting with you all again and uh yeah we'll uh we'll give away some sarah stuff yes let's find out the next uh uh legion of uh, blackpool managers around football could be you <laughs> right thank you very much guys for coming that was great. Uh, thank you very much, Mark, for showing up today. Uh, always uh, thanks, and thanks. Thanks to everyone else. Yeah, always a pleasure to talk to you, especially when it comes to football. A very passionate man. So I can't wait to be doing the same to you with rugby once we have an actual game with that. <laughs> uh, I'll definitely be doing a rug pull on rugby. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, guys. See you next time. See you next week. Bye-bye.